Okay, welcome to this lecture about trusses. So what trusses? Trusses are uh, a structure that made of uh, links and pins. That's how we call them. More professionally, you can call them members and joints. So what is link? Link is something that between two pins. So again, a structure look like bridges, towers, anything like that could be a truss or something like this. Again, that's what I'm drawing. This could be, this is a truss. I'm not sure whether this is a determined truss. We can actually, a definite truss that you could solve it or not. So again, I, I do not know about that at this time either. But uh, a truss is composed of links. So these are links and then they are between pins. We, we alternatively call these pins, we call them joints because they are where they are jointing together. Now, the method that we want to solve, again, what we are expecting in a, in, in a truss, we want to get the forces, we want to calculate how much the force in each link, and also uh, we want to see whether they are in compression or tension. So that's what we want to do. The steps to do the joint, again, if I look at every single joint, in every single joint, so I can see forces they are applying there. Uh, but basically, the steps is, the first one is draw the free body if necessary. So why we call it necessary? Because sometimes you can find the joint with two unknowns in there. You can just start there. You don't need to uh, do the free body diagram. But sometimes it's necessary to do the free body diagram. And then once you do this free body diagram, you find some unknown, you find a location to start. You can set up the equation sum of f of x, sum of f of y, and then move on to the next joints and go ahead from there. So the way that works is that it you act like a bacteria. You start eating from one place, and then you move on to the next plane, to the next plane, to the next plane. This could be very time consuming, right? Consider, for instance, if you have a truss like this, I want to use the join method. I start at join G, then I'm going to go to, for instance, I join G. If I get the ground reaction at join G, I can start from join G. I have two unknowns there. So once I solve for these two, then I can move on to the next one, which is going to be H down there. I cannot move to F because in F I have three more unknowns. I will move on to, to down here to, G, to H, then in H, I already solved this, I already solved this, then once I have the H, this and this will be done, then I can move on to F. Do you see that? So you act like starting from one point, but remember in every joint, you should have at least, at the most, two more, two unknowns. If you have more than two unknowns, you wouldn't be able to uh, solve it. So let's move on to uh, an example related to joint. So I have two examples. The first example is the example that you just saw it briefly a moment ago. So in this example, I have two forces that they are applying there, 400, 600. Those are external forces. We have ground reaction at point A, which is AY. And then I have CX, CY at point C, that's a pin. So now if you look into, if you take this structure out, in the definition of trusses, we assume that each link or each member, they do not have any weight. There's their light weight compared to the load that they are applied to them. Now, in this case, can you see any joint with two or less member? Like for instance, I can see joint A with two links on it, but I don't know AY. If I start there, I don't know how to proceed from there, right? If I move on to any joints here, I cannot start from any joint. So basically, I cannot start from C, I cannot start from point B here. I wouldn't be able to start from point D here either. I cannot start from any joint. So in this case, I need to draw the external free body diagram that I draw it. So I need to find a joint that I can start from there. Do you agree with me? If I found a Y, I can start the calculation. Of course I can, because if I find a Y, I would be able to proceed from there. So I'm going to draw, this is what we call it external free body diagram. We don't care about anything inside. We just look into this diagram. From this diagram, because I want to start from point A, I would do the sum of moment about where. I know like I can do sum of f of x, sum of f of y, and sum of moment, right? That's the three equations I have. I can do a moment about point C, and I can find a Y in one equation. So help me with that. So I'm going to do sum of moment about point C equal to zero. Then from here, I have the 400. 
about point C, the distance is 3. So I have 400 times 3, and that's going to go counterclockwise, so positive. We have the 600, that's going to go counterclockwise as well, plus 600. The distance for the 600 is 4. Then the next one I have is the AY. AY is going to go clockwise based on my diagram, which would be minus AY. Sorry for the noisy mouth minus a y the distance for a y will be on x it should be 6 equal to 0 so again if you solve for this you will find a y as 400 so let me check that yeah I, a y is 600 so once I found a y as 600 I can proceed from, again, 600 Newton. I can proceed from link A, from at joint A. So if you look into joint A, at joint A, you can see three forces. You can see a force AY like this, which we already know it. And then there are two forces, one AB, and one is AD. We always, at the join method, we always put forces on tension, right? If you got a negative number, that means that the force was in compression. No worries. That's it. So that's a basic theory that we follow and works very good. I can say basic assumption that we follow and always works. Now, the only thing I need, I need the angle here, right? So the angle here, if you consider here, the angle there, theta, would be tan inverse of theta is tan inverse of 4 over 3. So the angle here is 53.1 degrees. So I can set up the equation here. If I set up the equation, I'm going to have sum of f of x equal to 0, sum of f of y equal to 0. In every joint, you have only two equations. On the x, I have AD, force AD, plus FAB, again, I can call it AB instead of FAB, plus AB cosine 53.1 degrees equal to zero. Why use cosine here? Because that's adjacent to X. On the Y, that's going to be perpendicular. So if you look into the X, the, the Y itself is the y itself is here, so the y we have AB sine 53.1. On the x you have AB cosine 53.1. Now, sum of on the y, on the y I have AB sine 53.1 plus AY. Okay, I already calculated AY, AY is 600, so I'm going to put 600 here. This is a little bit annoying. You touch it, it becomes zoom in, zoom out. This is 600. Now, if we 600 there and then you solve for AB, you will find AB is equal to minus 600 over sine of 53.1. And the answer for this. It will take me forever to find the solution for A, B. I got 750 minus, yeah, negative 750. So negative, what does that mean? We assume tension, right? We got a negative answer. So this means, exactly, it means compression. Because you got a negative answer, that means the compression. And the compression is coming from this negative. Again, if you got positive, means tension. If you got negative, means compression. This makes our job very easy, right? So now, 
If I want to find AD, I already have AB put it in there. You got it negative, you use it negative. So don't change the sign again when you are reusing that. So I got minus 750 here. I'm going to bring this one here, plug it in here to find AD. So if I do that, I'm going to get AD is equal to minus AB cosine 53.1. So you have a minus there and then minus here, right? So that's become positive 750. The cosine 53.1. So for AD, I got 450. So we already know, like if you look at the trust, we already know this, we already know AB, we already know AD. What would be a good point to go after, right? If I go to point B, that's a good idea. Because if I go to point B, I can find BC and I can find BD. If I go to point D, I can find, so it doesn't matter wherever I go. So again, I'm going to go to point D. So at point D, we draw the free body diagram. So from here on, these two are known, we go to point D. So at D, we have forces. One force is DA or AD, we call it already, like this. I have one force going like this, that's a BD. And one force going up, that's BC or CD. The angle here is 53.1. It's going to be very quick to find the answer now. You can write the equation again for this. Sum of f of x equal to 0. Sum of f of y equal to 0. On the x, I'm going to get minus AD. Okay, go up. Minus AD. Then we have minus BD cosine 53.11, minus BD cosine 53.1 equal to zero. And then on the Y, I got DC. Uh, then we got plus BD sine, right? For the, for the other one is sine. Plus BD sine 53.1 equal to zero. So then what we have, we have, we already know AD, which is 450. We bring it here. Then from there, you can solve for BD. So BD will be equal to, BD is that number, is equal to 250. Then I can move on to the next one. For AD, we found 450, right? AD was 450, and then this one is 250. We take the BD from here, we put it here. And then from there, you can find DC is equal to the C is equal to 200 minus 200. So now you already have this, you can move on to point B. At point B, you already have everything. You can point BC as the very last name. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to point B again. I'm going to do a little bit of zoom out. So I just put everything in the same page. At point B, we have a 400 going down. Then we have the force BA or AB. And then I have a force DB, or I call it BD already. And I have another force here, BC. It's going to be a lot of computation, but you would be able to solve it. You do again sum of f of x here, sum of f of y here to uh, calculate. As you can see, the join method is, is a hectic method. The reason it's hectic because you have to go to every joint and you have to write sum of f of x, sum of f of y. Again, right now in this one that I'm writing, I have I have many unknowns, right? Again, they are known, this is known, this is known, the 400 is known. The only thing which is unknown is BC. Alternatively, you can use the code that I wrote for like some of for resultant force in the beginning of the semester. You can use that to find BC. Because on that, you can give the 400, the BAB and BD, their angle, where they are located, how much they are. So this will find the resultant force for that. Now, otherwise, I need to go with the angle. So the angle here, up here, is 53.1. The angle here is 
So sum of f of x. On the x, I have uh, bc plus bd cosine 53.1 and then minus ab cosine 53.1. So that's on the x, then we can write on the y. On the y, we have sum of f of y equal to zero. We have minus 400, and then minus bd sine 53.1 minus bd minus bab sine 53.1. Remember, we already have ab, we already have bd, just plug it in there. Again, we didn't need this actually. This will give us nothing. We just need the y, the x equation. So on the x equation, if you solve, you will find bc as your very last variable. bc is equal to minus 600. Okay, so there is something called zero force member. That's a member that you don't need even to care about it. And in the trusses. So what's a zero force member? If you have two members which are collinear, so let me just to write a definition of zero force member. If you have three members, and then in the three members, two members are collinear, meaning that they are on the same line. So we have something like this. We have one force like this, one force like this. The third force is like this, right? If you write the sum on different direction, right? You can actually consider that as a direction. If you write sum of f of x in this direction, and then you do sum of f of y, you can get this one is zero. That's a zero force member. So the, the, how we can find zero force member, if you find two member, again, first you have to have, you have to find a joint with three members only. Right, so there are conditions in that. First has to be three members only. No external force, nothing else, just three members. The second one is that two of them are collinear. And then once you found the, the, the third one, you can see the third, you can say, The third member is zero. Let me just to give you some skills, right? How to find it. So I'm going to go to the book and then we look into different places, right? Uh, if you look, just consider joint D. At joint D, how many members we have? We have three members, right? At joint D. Out of the three members that we have at joint D, Two of them are collinear. You see two of them collinear, meaning that they are on the same line. So the third one will be zero. Down here, by just looking at this, you, you can see that DJ is zero. That's it. DJ is zero. Why? Because uh, there are only three members there, and then the third member will be zero. The other two members are collinear. So let me just to look into a different truss. So... On, on this truss that I'm showing you, can you find a zero force member? Can you find somewhere there are only three and then one of them is, uh, one of them, is, two of them are collinear, the third one would be zero. Can you find any member on this truss? So, yeah, exactly. So A, B, B, C, B, H, right? Exactly. So B, H is zero. Because A, B, and B, C are collinear, B, H would be zero. This will save us a lot of time and calculation because uh, we don't need even to consider that, right? So consider this truss here. In this truss that you can see, can you give me a member which is zero force member? Uh, D, F, no, because there's a force of three kilonewton underneath that. There should be no force, just three members, yeah. So, yeah, BH, yeah, there's only one, which is BH. So I can move on, and then you can find a lot of them, right? Let's consider this case. 
this shot looks very scary, right? But it's not scary. It looks like a pet. It looks like a dog, right? You can even play with it. If you can see that zero force member, you can just give me one zero force member. LB is zero. Okay, LB is zero. So if you look at joint B, LB is zero. Meaning that LB has no force on it. This guy is dead, right? Now consider the LK and, and AL. Do you see these guys? They are collinear. LK and LA. Do you agree with me that LC is also zero? Because if this guy is zero, that will make this guy zero too. When that guy is dead, we have only three members. Two of them are collinear, the third one will be zero. Same thing in the other side. This is zero and this is zero. So this makes this trust much easier to solve. Yeah, no, it's not, the total is not zero. Remember that. Yeah, on this joint, because there is no force acting, again, the LB, AB and BC, they have forces. Right? Those are collinear, they carry forces. The third one is zero. The third one, LB doesn't carry any forces. Yeah, thank you for question. We can clarify them more. So now in this case that I have, I like to solve this trust. Uh, yeah, just give me a second. No question, and we could record it. So if you look at point C, right? In this case, I want to start solving this problem. So in this problem, can you identify a zero force member? BD is zero. Okay. If BD is zero, so again, I can draw I can draw the diagram at D. At D, I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to have DC. I'm going to have DE. Right? The third one was already zero. So DB is zero. Right? If DB is zero, if I go to joint B, let me just to go to joint B. At joint B, I have one force like BC. Remember, I always put forces on tension. I have one force going this way. BA. We have one DB. And we have another force going there, B. Okay, before I proceed, DB was zero from before, right? B DB was zero from here. If DB is zero, I don't know what happened to that page, why I closed it? Okay, if DB is zero, This will make BE zero as well. Why? Because this is dead, right? We have three members. Two of them are collinear. The third one is going to be zero. So now in this big truss, I just need to solve for this thing is dead too. In this truss, I just need to solve for not all of it, right? Solve for the rest of them. Now, in order to get a start in this truss, I would need to go to external free body diagram. I can start from joint C and continue from there. So let's get started. So if I start from joint C, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create external free body diagram for this, which is going to look like this. Again, in external free body diagram, we don't care what's going inside. We just look at the forces. So I have 450 here. I have 600 here. Those are forces that are applied. The ground reaction, I have AY, AX here, and I have CY here, that's it. I want to start from joint C, so the easiest way for me to start, I can do a moment about point A. So let's do moment about point A, sum of moment about A is equal to zero. From here, CY times distance is six, and then these two forces, 600 is going through point A, you see that? just the 450 left. So I have CY, which is positive. The 450 will have a clockwise moment about point A. So minus 450 into that distance is not given to me, but I can find it. This side is six, this is 30, right? If you have a triangle, this angle here is 30, the side here will be three, right? Because this would be six sine 30. 
six sine thirty is three. Minus four fifty into three equal to zero. From here I can find C Y is equal to uh, two twenty five. Two twenty five pound. If I have C Y I can start from joint C. Let's start from joint C. At joint C I have B C and I have C D. The angle here is thirty. The force at C, the C Y is look like this. And CY is 225. So I could write the sum of f of x, sum of f of y at this joint. So like what we do it for any other problem. Sum of f of x equal to 0. On the x we have minus BC minus CD cosine 30 equal to 0. On the y I have equal to 0. The y I have CD sine 30 minus 225 equal to 0. So from this equation you can find CD is equal to 225 divided by sine 30 which is going to be 450 again. Right, so this would be 450 pound and that's intention because you got it positive. Now for BC I'm going to put it on that equation. So BC will be equal to 450 the CD was 450, right? Cosine 30. So I'm going to get BC is equal to... I used to have CD or... Okay, Google and I asked them how much is this. So 450... Cosine 30. I got 389, 390. Uh, this is going to be negative, by the way. BC is negative. So this means a compression. Or well, we can just put it with a C. C is in. So uh, if I move up, if I move up to what I have, right now, I already know DC, right? Or we call it CD, it doesn't matter. CD or DC, that's 450. So that, because this is 450, it will make DE 450 as well. Because they are collinear, the third member is zero, that will be 450, you see? Because they are on the same direction, right? Now, I already found BC as minus 390, so this will make the BA minus 390 as well. So remember, from this diagram, you'll get BA is equal to BC, and then DE is equal to DC. Now, in this trust, this was zero, this was zero, this was minus 390. This is minus 390 as well. Up here was 450. Down here was 450. So the only thing that left I need to calculate will be this member here, right? So I can go to point E and I can write the sum of f of x, sum of f of y at point E. So at point E I have one force, force of ED. Let me just do maybe a little bit of zoom out maybe. I have a force of EB and then I have two forces, one force like this, 450, one force like this is 600 and then I have a force going down EA. Then the angle here is by the way 60, right, EB. Why I didn't draw the, the, this force, the force EB, because that was zero already, right? I don't, I don't need to draw something which was zero. Now, in this equation, I want to find EA. If I just do sum of f of y, I can find EA. So, sum of f of y equal to 0. From here, we got minus EA, minus ED, cosine 60, minus 600, equal to 0. From here, you get EA is equal to 600. Um, so, that actually would be a minus, right? 600 plus ED cosine 60. ED was the same as DC, which was 450. So if you calculate the answer, you're going to get minus 825 pounds.